sits down with Daily Show host Trevor Noah. We check out all the Star Wars at Shanghai Disneyland. And much, much more. Now, from the Lucasfilm headquarters, it's the Star Wars Show. Hello, I'm Peter Townley. And I'm Andy Gutierrez, and this is the Star Wars Show, where we talk about Star Wars really fast because our normal voices are painfully slow and monotone. Whatever do you mean, Andy. Let's go to the news. I love news. Empire Magazine debuted a slew of exclusive Rogue One covers this week for their upcoming October issue, which features a ton of behind-the-scenes looks at the making of the film, including an in-depth look at our favorite new character, Bistan the Space Monkey. The magazine, along with all three variant covers, is available on store shelves tomorrow. And once again, it's New Comic Book Day, and there are two brand new Star Wars books hitting shelves this week. First is Star Wars number 22, which continues the last flight of the Harbinger arc following Han and Leia's attempt to hijack a Star Destroyer. The issue also features the Scar Squadron of Troopers, pictured here in Jorge Molina's concert art a newly introduced class of stormtroopers who continue their quest to thwart the rebels plans. Also out today is Star Wars The Force Awakens number three whose storyline this month is covering the Raftar sequence, Kylo Ren's conversation with Snoke, and a glimpse inside Maz's castle. Finally this week we here at the Star Wars show and StarWars.com love art, especially Star Wars fan art. That's why we are asking to see your original Star Wars fan art. It can be anything you want to show off, any character, any ship, as long as it's Star Wars we want to see it. You can submit your fan art on Instagram using the hashtag Star Star Wars fan art. Hi, it's Peter and Andy. It's me, John Beagle, the Star Wars Show lawyer, with some breaking news. By sharing art with hashtag Star Wars fan art, you agree to our use of the art and your account name in all media and what terms of use available at DisneyTermsOfUse.com. That's all. Oh, is that, that's okay. it? Yeah, yes, Thanks also a huge Trevor Noah fan. Can't wait to watch your interview. Thanks. You're welcome. And as always, for more breaking news from around the galaxy, be sure to check out StarWars.com. <laughs> 欢迎来到上海迪士尼乐园 Welcome to Shanghai Disneyland We're here to look for Star Wars Let's go! It says Star Trek Translation error? 31,850 bricks and they didn't have enough for the side blades Here we are, Star Wars launch bay The best thing about it is that it's air conditioned You've never heard of the Millennium Falcon? Uh-huh. said hello in Chinese. Oh, oh. May the force be with you, thank you. Welcome back to the Star Wars Show. Today we are joined by comedian and host of The Daily Show, Trevor Noah. Thank you very much for having me. Thank you so much for coming and hanging out. All your intros and outros should be Yoda style. That's what you should do on the show. To the show, welcome you are. <laughs> that sounds like fun. I'm curious to know about how you became a Star Wars fan. Because you're just a few years older than me. And yeah. when I was a kid, we were in like a gap between yep. the movies. So. Phantom Menace was the first one for me. Because someone tried to get me to watch Star Wars. And then I went through this period in my life where I refused to watch old movies. <laughs> because they just looked horrible. I was yeah. like, you can see that that's not real. That looks fake, that's horrible. Because I thought our generation's green screen and CGI was amazing. So I watched Phantom Menace, and I was like, this is the greatest movie I've ever seen. And people were like, oh, have you watched the original Star Wars? And I was like, I do not <laughs> watch the old Star Wars. I watch the new Star Wars. And I love Jar Jar Binks. Good look, I don't think you understand. Really? When I found out he was the most irritating character, I was like, what do you mean? Because I was like, he's the coolest thing ever. He, we have a soft spot for Jar Jar here. I think he's a little bit misunderstood. I don't care whether he was misunderstood or not. I was just like, he's the coolest <laughs> thing ever. He was just rock and roll. And then because the video game came out of The Phantom Menace, and it was probably one of the best Star Wars video games ever. So that just solidified it for me. So I was pod racing. Uh, I was... I love that game. Then I went back and watched the originals. And obviously, it just it blows your mind. So you speak six languages. Yeah. Including Zulu, which is actually in a little bit of Star Wars. The Jawas speak. Yeah. So you understood what they said. Yeah. So they're having like conversations. There's one scene. I think they have R2 and they have C3PO. There's, there's like a little scene and they're prodding people along yeah. and they're talking. And they're having a full conversation on like what it means to be a man or something. Really? Yeah. So when, when people are watching it, they're just like, hey, in the maze born, in the maze born, in get a good. And I'm like, oh, yeah, that's a deep conversation. Go back, go back. <laughs> <laughs> and like my friends are like, what are you talking about? Oh, like he's talking about what it means to be a man. And he said something about this. And, and there's like little snippets of conversation. That's wild. Yeah, so That's... I'm watching two movies. 
That's I'm, there's like a subplot that I'm in that other people, I guess, are not watching in Star Wars. Oh, that's some that's some nerdy stuff. That, <laughs> like you don't guys, you don't even understand. Like I understand Star yeah, Wars way better. I do understand them. Now I'm interested to know how different growing up with Star Wars was in South Africa as opposed to here, because you know when new Star Wars came out, when the prequels came out, there was mass hysteria. Like, yep. The, the pandemonium surrounding it is huge, and you don't really hear much about how it was, you know, say in South Africa. Was it kind of a large thing or is it? No, look, I mean, Star Wars is huge all over the world, but it, it wasn't the cultural phenomenon that it was here. I remember going to see the movie here and people were dressed as the characters. I didn't know that that was an option. <laughs> Had I known this, my life would have been completely different. What would you have been? Chewbacca would be great for the winter time. Mm -hmm. Chewbacca would be great to date in the winter time. <laughs> like I bet if Chewbacca rolls in real life, like winter, he'd get a lot of like Tinder, uh, Tinder requests. Oh, totally. Like likes to cuddle. Oh yeah, yeah. That would just it would just blow up, and then you're cuddling. And... So you are on your comedy tour currently. I am. Tell me a little bit about that. You're finishing up in the states right now, and then you're heading over to Australia. I am. I'm just traveling around, doing shows, taking a, a bit of time off. When I have time off from the Daily Show, I. I travel. That's cool. You're yeah. never staying in the same place, huh? I basically roll. I'm like Han Solo. I just, just roll from one galaxy to the next, just put on a little show. I, I love traveling because it reminds you that your world is not the world, you know, which is sometimes what people do is they, they live in their world for so long that they forget that there's so much more happening out there. Yeah, it's kind of like Star Wars, too. It's exactly what it's like. Yeah. Well, awesome. I wish you the best of luck on the rest of your tour and with The Daily Show. Thank you so much for thank coming. You for having yeah. me. Thank you and for we will me. be back with more Star Wars Show in just a minute. The Star Wars Show presents Everything is Important. This week, Captain Tarples. Limited to under 90 seconds of screen time, most of which is spent on the back of a cat who, Captain Tarples is the other deep doo-doo spewing, tattletailing gungan not named Jar Jar Binks, whose quick thinking during the Battle of Naboo probably saved Jar Jar's life. And because of Tarples' heroic act, Jar Jar became a senator, allowed Palpatine to rise to power, start the Clone Wars, which Tarple died during thanks to Grievous, spoilers, and led to the formation of the Empire. Because without Captain Tarples, there might have never been an Empire. And without Captain Tarples, Star Wars would have never had this phrase. I would have mercy, Captain Tarples. Earlier this week, CP Gamers unveiled this awesome custom Lego AT-AT they created using anywhere between four to 5,000 bricks. <laughs> Which had us at the Star Wars show thinking, we want to see your own custom Lego Star Wars creations. Send them using the hashtag Lego Star Wars show and we will feature our favorites here next week. And before we completely sign off, make sure to check out our brand new series, The Star Wars After Show, presented by Verizon, where we wrangle a panel of other Lucasfilm employees to talk more in depth about all the Star Wars from this episode. Check it out this Thursday and every Thursday only on youtube.com slash Verizon. And as always, remember to like the video, subscribe to the channel, follow us on Twitter, Instagram, and Google+, like us on Facebook, subscribe to Vine, and download the Star Wars app. Thanks, and may the Force be with you.